Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about trigonometric function of sine. Um, actually, my plan is to explain all the trigonometric functions, um, but the first one for sine I will probably do in more details. Um, so, in any way, how can we examine the function? Well, basically, we were talking about different properties of the functions, domain, range, graph, properties, etc. So, basically, that's what I'm going to analyze right now. All right, so, sine of x. Y is equal to sine of x. First of all, let's talk about what is x. We were talking about sine as a function which is defined for angles. Now, the definition of sine was, if you remember, we had a unit circle, and for any angle, which we start from positive direction of the x-axis and move counterclockwise to whatever the angle value actually is, we get the point A with coordinates x, y, and sine of this angle F is, by definition, is y coordinate. So the length of this catechus in this right triangle. Don't forget that this is a unit circle, so hypotenuse is equal to 1. That's why the ratio is always equal to y coordinate. Now, what is the angle uh, phi in this particular case? How is it measured? Well, we know that angles are measured in either degrees um, when the whole uh, circle is divided into 360 degrees, or in radians, and the radian is basically an angle which corresponds uh, the, to the arc, which is equal to the radius in length. And uh, I was also talking about radians as being a preferable measure for angles in, uh, in trigonometric functions when we are using the function context. Well, so let me just tell up front. So whenever we see something like this, what we actually mean is that x is a numeric value of some angle in radian. So sine of 1, let's say, is a sine of an angle of 1 radian, approximately like this. Now, if we are talking about uh, sine of 2 pi, it means the sine of an angle of 2 pi radians. And 2 pi radians obviously is a, a full uh, angle complete, which is equal to 360 degrees. So x is an angle in radians. Now, also, I mentioned that this particular angle can be measured either in the positive direction. So whenever x is positive, it means we are starting from here and move whatever number of radians counterclockwise. However, x can be negative as well, and the angle in this case is we are moving uh, uh, clockwise uh, towards this direction from the positive direction of x. So the sine of minus 1 is actually something like this. This is angle of minus 1 radian. And the sign would be the y coordinate of this particular uh, point, which is negative, by the way, because it goes down. All right? So this is as far as the definition is concerned. Now let's investigate how this sign behaves as we are changing an argument. And for this, I will draw a graphical representation of this function. So, 
Let's start from the beginning when x is equal to 0, which means we are not moving from this direction, and the point A actually takes this position, which is 1, 0. This is 1, and vertical position is 0. So what's the sign of the uh, angle uh, of 0 radians? Well, that's the y-coordinate, which is 0. So whenever x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So we start from this particular point when we are drawing the graph of our function. Now, as x is increasing, point A moves along this circle towards the uppermost position when the coordinates are x is 0 and y is 1. And the angle, in this case, is equal to, so what's the this particular angle? In degrees, we kind of all comfortable this is 90 degrees, because it's one quarter of the full circle, which is 360, right? Now, in radians, the whole circle, the full circle uh, angle is 2 pi radians, right? Because circumfer circumference of... Uh, uh, a circle equal to 2 pi r. So how many pieces of lengths r are in the full circle? 2 pi. All right, so the full circle is 2 pi, so a quarter is 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. So whenever our x is equal to pi over 2, y takes its maximum value of 1. Now, how is it moving in between? Well, it's not easy right now to say. Well, maybe it moves like this. Maybe it moves like this. Well, maybe it moves even by straight line. Well, a more precise analysis shows that the shape of this curve is this. More than that, actually. If you draw a tangential line to the point zero, it will be exactly 45 degrees, the bisector of this, of this angle. So let me just draw it a little bit more accurately so you will just see what I mean. So let me start with white sector of this line. So the graph would look like this. So this would be a P over 2 line. So that's how it grows. From 0, at x is equal to 0, to 1, when x is equal to over uh, pi over 2. Next. As we move another quarter of a circle, which means we are moving here, to pi, what happens with our y-coordinate? Well, it goes back down to zero, right? In this particular point, it's minus one, zero. So from one, it diminishes down to zero, my y-coordinate. And that's why the graph goes this way. What happens next? Next, my y-coordinate is going continue through 0 going down to minus 1. The coordinate of this point is x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1. So we go through 0 to minus 1. And I'm not going to draw it much further because I don't have space, but I'll just indicate it here 
that somewhere along the line, at this point, which is, this point is x is equal to uh, 3 pi over 2. This is x is equal to pi. This is x is equal to pi over 2. And this is x is equal to 0. Right? So, at this point, it's equal to minus 1. And then it increases again back to zero, and that's where the full circle actually is ending. Well, at the same time, as you understand, I can go to negative uh, direction of the of the angle. So, what if x is going to to this point, but not through the positive counterclockwise direction when it's equal to 3 pi over 2, but to a negative point, which is minus pi over 2. So it's exactly the same point, right? Which means it should be exactly the same, which is minus 1, right? So whenever my point is here, about the same distance, minus pi over 2. I also have to have the same minus 1, which means my graph should go the same way. The same way to minus 1 here at 3 pi over 2 and here at minus pi over 2. And then, after that, if I go even uh, further to a negative side, it would be x is equal to minus pi, then it increases, my y coordinate is increases to zero, right? So the graph will go like this at point minus pi. And again it repeats itself, basically. So, all I'm saying is that you will have this waving function which is changing uh, from the value of 0 to the maximum of 1, then goes back to 0, then to the minimum of minus 1, then goes back to 0, etc., etc. As I'm circling round and round and round, obviously this is a periodic function with a period equal to the full circle, which is 2 pi. So, that's what I wanted to talk about right now, um, about behavior of this function. All right? Now, after we have established general behavior of the function, let's just uh, very quickly summarize the properties of the function. So, domain is x can take any value. Because whatever the value is, positive value, it means it's the angle of radians which I have to move from this direction counterclockwise whatever number of times. Uh, let's say if uh, my angle is uh, 16 pi, for instance. Well, then it means I have to circle around, uh, around the center eight times, two pi each time to get 16 pi's. And I will still get, go, go uh, to this point, and my sign will be exactly zero as it was when x is equal to zero. So the function is periodical. Um, the period is equal to 2 pi, because the values are repeated itself after 2 pi. Uh, the range is from minus 1 to 1. So I can say that my domain is from minus infinity to plus infinity. My range is from minus 1 to plus 1. one. Here I have to put equal, less than or equal. Because at certain points it's equal to, uh, it's equal to 1. Now, um, let's just um, fix certain specific points. You see, this is the point where the function is equal to 0, and it repeats after pi. So, 
uh, my function is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 for x is equal to pi times n, where n is any integer number, negative integer, positive integer, or 0. By the way, the fact that it repeats the value 0 doesn't mean that uh, after each, uh, after pi, doesn't mean that the pi is a period. Pi is not a period. 2 pi is a period. But 0 does repeat its, re repeats itself because the function has this particular shape. So it, within the period, it actually um, takes val value of 0 more than once. It's not a monotonous function, right, during the period. Uh, what else can be said? Well, when is the function equal to 1? Well, uh, y is equal to 1 when x is equal to pi over 2 plus period, 2 pi, and the period can be multiplied any number of times. And again, n can be positive or negative. So if n is negative, then 1 would be over there. And also, it will be somewhere there. When n is equal to 1, it will be, what, 5 pi over 2. It will be over there. If n is equal to minus 1, uh, it will be minus 3 pi over 2. It's somewhere here. And if n is equal to 0, we will have just pi over 2, which is here. So all these are points where function is equal to 1. Now, when is the function equal to minus 1? Well, minus p over 2 x is equal to minus p over 2, and again, plus pi n, because 2 pi is, plus 2 pi n, because 2 pi is a, a period. Now, what other interesting properties? Uh, let me go back to our circle, and I will probably have to redraw it again, because it's too many different things are already there. So, this is our circle. Now, let's take the same angle here. And here. So these are the same angles. And let's compare this is x1 and this is x2. These are two angles. So x1 is certain number of radians this particular angle is. x2 is this particular angles. Now, if these two acute angles are congruent, then let's say this is point A1, this is point A2. This is O, this is point X1, this is point X2. So angle X1, O, A1, congruent to X2, O, A2. Now, what does it mean from the sine position? Well, sine is an ordinate, right? But ordinates are the same. In both cases, ordinate of this uh, point is this, and ordinate of this point is also this. So, it looks like sine of x1 should be equal to sine of x2. Now, can it be proven? Well, very easily, obviously. I mean, if you compare these two triangles, they have the same hypotenuses because its uh, radiuses of this circle, they're both equal to 1. And since these angles are equal, and these angles are 90 degrees, so these angles will be equal as well, because it's 90 degree minus x1. Uh, so we have, and, and, and this is common 
catch it. So actually, these are um, congruent triangles because they have a side angle and a side. Side angle and a side. So, this is common anyway. So, um, well, actually, I, I shouldn't really say it's common because in theory, I can project, uh, yes, forget about this common thing. For instance, is it possible that they project the different points? This projects this, and this projects into this point. Is it possible? Well, the answer is no, because since these are projections, which means these are perpendiculars, then these are two right triangles, and right triangles with the same hypotenuse and the same acute angle are congruent, which means these two cajetus should be uh, of the same length, and that's why the projection is actually to the same point, and this is indeed a common, a common side. I shouldn't really assume this is common. All right, so being as it may, we have proven that these two points have the same um, ordinate, and that's why this is a true statement. Now, how can I express x2 angle if I know x1? Well, obviously, x2 is equal to pi minus x1, right? Because this is pi, and this is minus x1. These two angles are congruent. So, I can rewrite this. Uh, instead of x2, I can put pi minus x1. And in general, I can say that sine of pi minus x equals to sine of x. So, for acute angles, it's obvious. Well, what if angles are not acute? Well, if you really just move it uh, further, x1 will be moved on this side. Uh, uh, x2, therefore, will be on this side. And it will still be the same. So, even if it's obtuse angles, it, it's still exactly the same thing. Right? Let me just draw a picture in this particular case. So, my point is that this particular equality is an equality for any angle. So, what if my angle is obtuse? So, this is my x. And I'm saying that 100 and 80 minus x, I should go this way. So from 180, this, I should go back by the same angle. So it would be this. So it's still exactly the same thing. And this is pi minus x. And exactly the same would be even if x is greater than pi, even if it's ne in, in this particular territory. In which case, it's just a negative. You can come to the same point through a negative direction. So, no matter how we move, this equation would be held because the ordinates of the points would be exactly the same. This is ordinate. Okay. How about sine of pi plus x? Here is a trick. Since the function is periodic, it's exactly the same as sine of pi plus x minus 2 pi, right? If I will subtract 2 pi or add 2 pi, 2 pi is a period, so the function with exactly the same uh, value, which is equal to sine of uh, x minus pi, right? x minus 2 pi plus pi, so it's x minus pi. Now, what's the difference between x, uh, between pi minus x and x minus pi? Well, the difference is a, a sign. So, whatever the angle is, if this is pi minus x, this is 
x minus pi, right? But if I'm moving to a different direction by the same angle, instead of this, I go to this. My ordinate would be the same in absolute value, but different in sign, right? Because here it's a positive ordinate and here is negative. So if these two angles are equal as angles, they are congruent, then these two also are equal in lengths, but they are opposite in signs. So this is equal to minus sine of pi minus x, right? So if I change the sign of the argument, the, arg the function changes the sign. Now, sine of pi minus x, we already said what it is, right? So this is minus sine x. So, here is basically two final statements. Sine of pi minus x is the same as sine of x. Sine of pi plus x is the same as minus sine x. And incidentally, we actually talked about what happens if I would change the sign of the argument. And as I was just indicating, if I change the sign of, of the argument, my function changes the sign. Because instead of this direction, I go to this direction by the same angle, and obviously ordinate will be uh, the same in absolute value, but negative, but, but opposite sign. Now, what is this? This is an indication that our sign is an odd function. This is a definition of the odd function. f of minus x minus x is equal to minus f of x. And incidentally, definition of the even function is this. So, what we are saying is that our sign is an odd function. An odd function, if you remember, had the graph which is symmetrical relatively to the center of coordinate. And what I was just drawing was something like this. Which is obviously symmetrical relative to symmetrical relative to this particular um, point, the beginning of the coordinate. This is the graph which I was just drawing. Okay, so, uh, function, uh, we talked about domain, we talked about range of the function, we talked about the fact that the function is odd, uh, we talked about these two couple of formulas, sine of pi minus x and sine of pi plus x, how it can be transformed. Um, let's just draw um, as an exercise, one particular graph of, uh, of some uh, function which is a little bit more complicated than just plain sine x. Uh, we know how the graph is supposed to be transformed if we transform some, in some elementary way, if we transform an argument and the function. So what I would like to suggest right now is to graph the function 3 sine of x over 2 plus p over 4. Let's draw this particular uh, graph of this particular function. So, obviously it's based on the function y is equal to sine of x. Now, what's the transformations which we really should do? What is the transformation with uh, an argument? Well, we have a kind of a complicated transformation. We divide it and then we add it, which is not exactly the proper way, but I would like to express it is 3 sine of x plus uh, plus what? Plus pi over 2 divided by 2. That's easy. Because first we add something to the x, then we divide it, the argument by 2. So let's just do one by one. We start with plain 
sine. So, what's the plane sine? It's this. Now, I draw it on minus p, p interval. What's important for any periodic function, you can draw it not only on uh, an interval from, let's say, 0 to 2 pi, because 2 pi is a period. But you can draw it on any um, uh, interval which has the length of a period, and then repeat itself. So in this case, the period is 2 pi, but I decided to draw it from minus pi to pi instead of from 0 to 2 pi, because it repeats anyway. So this is the beginning. Now, first what we do, we do this, x plus uh, pi over 2. So I would like to draw a graph y is equal to x, uh, sorry, sine of x plus pi over 2. So what happens with this particular graph? You are, well, you know that if I'm adding something like pi over 2 to x, the graph is supposed to be shifted to the left by pi over 2. So. Let's shift it to the left. What happens? Um, well, that's what happens. When the blue graph is shifted to the left by pi over 2, the red one uh, comes up, right? Next. Next, I will divide argument by 2. Now, what does it mean when we divide argument by 2? The graph is stretching horizontally from the center both directions by 2. So, the next one would be... So, instead of being equal to 0 at pi over 2, it will be equal to 0 at pi. And correspondingly here. So the new graph will look like this. And here it will reach 0 to minus 5. So the graph will be stretched. Finally, if I'm multiplying, so this is y is equal to sine of x plus p over 2 divided by 2. And next one, we are multiplying it by uh, by 3. Okay? Now, what if we multiply it by 3? Well, it means that it's stretching vertically uh, by a factor of 3. So instead of maximum being 1 and minimum being minus 1, we will have maximum 3. So it will be something like this. So it will be the same style wave, but the wave will be shifted left, right, stretched horizontally, or stretched vertically. But the general shape will remain. So whenever you see a function like this, where x is transformed through some kind of a linear transformation, and the function itself is transformed through some kind of a linear transformation, it's the same uh, style of graph, but it will be stretched, shifted, or whatever. Well, um, that basically uh, completes my uh, story about function y equal to sine of x. Um, so don't forget that whenever you have x as a number, it means an angle in radians. Well, and everything else basically goes like in every other function. You have a domain, which is everything. You have a range, which is from minus 1 to 1. Uh, you have maximum, minimum, all the properties. And you might, uh, yes, periodicity, very important. 2 pi is periodicity. And uh, a couple of formulas, which I said about sine of x uh, plus pi or 
x minus pi, whatever. Um, and the, fa the fact that the function is odd, also very important, symmetrical relative to, to the center. That's summary of whatever I said. That's it. Um, I will uh, try to spend some time for every trigonometric function and draw graphs. Probably the graphs are the most important, just to, to show you how the function behaves, basically. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.